Hello, hello everybody. This is Professor West. Welcome back to Python Programming. Um, as you can see, I'm still using PyCharm, the integrated development environment that I walked you through downloading and installing previously. And today's topic will be variables. And specifically, we're going to um, ask the user to input several variables. We're going to add them together and we're going to output it. So let's keep it simple. Um, the first thing you need to know about a variable is it's simply a placeholder. So remember when you were in school and you would say like uh, <clears throat> x times 2 equals 10 and then you would use math to figure out that x equals 5? Well, x was a variable. You know, in the next problem it might say x plus 2 equals 7. And again, you know, you figure out, oh, x is 5 or x is 9 this time or whatever. But that's all it is, is it's a temporary way for the computer to store a value. So, <clears throat> let's just jump right in. I'm going to say num1, because that's what I'm calling my first variable, equals input, quote, enter the first number, and I'm going to hit the enter key. So I'm actually going to hit it a few times because I like to give myself space. So let's talk about what's happening here. Num1 is the name of my variable. At this point, it does not have a type assigned to it. So a type means that it could be a number, it could be a character, it could be a uh, whole number, it could be a decimal number, it could be any kind we don't know yet. Um, Python is really good about letting you use it and then figure out what it's supposed to be later. So, next I have an input statement that will pop up the letter, the word, please enter the first number. Or actually, I don't see please. It just says enter the first number. Whatever you type will be assigned to num1. So if I run this program right now, that's all it would do. So what I want to do is I actually want to have more. I want 5, so num2 equals input open parentheses, enter the second number, and it's trying to uh, help you up there a little bit, but I didn't need it to. So now I'll have the same thing happen. After the first one pops up, it'll ask me to enter the second number. And I have actually already typed these out, so I'm just going to paste the next three in. You're welcome to pause this video and type them all in yourself manually. I just did this to save some time. So the next thing we're going to do, assuming that you're caught up now, is we're going to create a new variable called sum, and we're going to add those together. Oops. Sum equals num1 plus num2 plus num3 plus num4 plus num5. And then I'm going to have another statement that says print sum. So what's going to happen here is, let's say I entered, you know, some different numbers for each one. It's going to come here, it's going to add them all together, and let's say the total is 23. Well, it would then assign 23 back to sum. So sum would now have the value of 23. Then when I tell it to print the sum, it would actually print the number. At least that's what we're wanting to happen. That's not exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to run this program and show you why. Why does it act like it doesn't like that? Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's run this program and see why. Yes, I want to add five numbers. I want to run add five numbers. Okay, enter the first number. Now, I've, in PyCharm, the, the focus was up here. So if I just type, it's actually going to type up there, which I don't want. So, I have to click down here and tell it where I want it the, f the first time. You don't have to do it for each number. So, enter the first number. Let's say 3, enter, 6, enter, 5, 2, 5. Now, what we want to happen is we want to have all of them added together, and we want to display the sum, which was the total. But that's not what happens here. Why is that not what happens here? Instead, it just put all the numbers together. It did this for a very specific reason. 
it doesn't know that we want these to be numbers. The computer doesn't know everything. And right now, it's assuming that we want them to be characters. So, because that's the default unless you tell it otherwise. So when you add characters, a character is like a letter, like a B or an N or an X or, you know, exclamation point or whatever. It doesn't try to add the letter B and the letter Q together. It would just put B, Q. So what I actually have to do is I have to go in and I have to tell it. So I'm going to create another line. I'm going to call it... I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it sum2, just to be different. I could have just fixed the line above, but I wanted to leave it so you could see the difference. Float num1. Now what this is going to do is, now it's telling it sum2 will be, and it's going to tell it num1 as a float. A float is simply a number that can have a decimal place. So like 4.2 would be a float. 5.8, 100.9, Those are all floats. So I actually have this line typed out because I don't want to have to keep retyping everything. So you're welcome again to pause the program or to pause the video until you get caught up. And uh, now I'm going to output, oh, I want to output some two because that's what I'm dealing with here. Now you'll be able to see the difference because I left both of these on here. So let's run it again I'm gonna tell it to run the add five number because um, that's what I named my program was add five number by, by the way that's why it's asking that so enter the first number let's do it again three six five two and four and now this time notice that on this one here where I left it alone it still came up and did it as a string it thought the letter three was a string and the letter six was a string and the letter five was a string or character and then on this one where I told it that each one is a float that's a number it actually added them together and come up with 20 for my output so you might ask yourself why on earth would the computer not understand that if I enter a number I want it to be treated like a number well, that's a very good question let me give you an example here what if I were to say um, let's say num 10 equals and let's say this is I, I asked you to enter a social security number so let's just say 555 dash 32 dash 6666 if this is a string then the computer is going to leave it exactly like it is which is it would be a string of characters I kept saying character earlier but a character is for one item in a string is several characters in a row so right now the computer would look at number 10 and say we're gonna leave this exactly like it is that's how he wants it otherwise if I tried to treat this as a number it would subtract 32 from 555 then it would subtract 6666 from what's left so instead of saving it as 555 dash blah 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 it would actually just have something like 6128 or whatever the number is. It would be a negative number even. So um, the same goes for phone numbers. You know, if I had one and I called it phone and I said, you know, um, 800-345-2345, the computer would multiply these first and then subtract this number instead of just leaving it as a phone number. So this is why they, by default, use strings. And if you want it to be a number, you have to go in and specify that it's a number so that it can actually add it together. So anyway, um, I promise to keep these as short as I can. And that's pretty much it for this first one. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. So anybody that wants to view it can do so there. I, I uh, Always welcome everybody to subscribe to my channel if you want so that you can see all my latest videos. But I hope you found this helpful and I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next segment. Bye.